In this tutorial, I'll be going over what prop matrix does. Now to begin, rather than explaining it, I will just give you a visual demonstration instead. So first I go to script and select prop matrix, and I will paste in the following prompt, which I will explain later, and click generate. And as you can see here, what it's done, it's generated a matrix, and now you can see the effects of combining the different artists styles together and using them separately. And this was done by using this phrase over here, by using vertical bar, then the artist, another vertical bar, then the other artist, and another vertical bar, and the other artist. Now, for another example, let's say a castle by, then I type in the vertical bar, and then I put in the first artist I want, so Thomas Cole. Then another vertical bar to show that I want the next parameter now, which will be Greg this time. Then I click generate. And as you can see here, here's the finished output. And so this is really useful if you want to see how combining different parameters affect your final image. And this doesn't just apply to only artists. You can have, for example, let's say a car by a car, then a vertical bar red stripes, another vertical bar, green paint, and then, so it just doesn't just only apply to artists, you can use it for other parameters as well. And the next part I want to show you is this phrase here, which puts the variable parts at the start of the prompt. Now up to now, every time we've generated, the variables have been put at the end of the prompt. Now in order to put it at the start of the prompt, click on this button here. Now to show you, I will use a different prompt. So I've just pasted in this prompt. Now by pressing this, checking this option here, now it will generate a farm, 8K ultra realistic and so on, town, 8K ultra realistic and so on, skyscraper, 8K ultra, ultra realistic and so on. And so this is especially useful because sometimes the order of words in stable diffusion does matter. So if I didn't, if I unselected this, it will generate all of this. It will use this prompt first and then add these three variables in later, which would not be ideal. And also keep paying attention that even though I did say I want these variables at the start of the prompt, I do still include them at the end. So now if I click generate, and now as you can see, the images have been generated and the matrix has been completed. And so if you do want the full images, you want to see each image separately, you can just click on here and this will open it up in your file explorer. And from there you can do whatever you want with the images. Now the last thing I want to show you is the use different seed for each picture. And what this does is so far up to now, the images have been using the same seed. So that is why you can see some sort of resemblance between some of the images. But now if I want completely different images in, in the matrix, I now click this option here, click generate. Now by selecting this option, the images are now completely different from one another. And this was unlike the before when we were using the same seed for the image. They, in them, they sort of had some resemblance to one another, but now it's completely gone. And that's it. That is all you need to know for prompt matrix. And I'll see you in the next video.